Hey, what is up my fellow golf ball addicts? Welcome back to the channel and we have another list for you today. I have not done one of these since uh, the end of the year last year for 2022 and I did a couple videos actually. I did, you know, top five tour balls, top five value tour balls, and then top five two-piece golf balls. And I think I also did most spinningest as well. So there was a bunch of videos in there. So if you haven't seen them, uh, check them out on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate that. Uh, but today I am doing the top five golf ball brands 2023. So this is something I will definitely do every year. I've wanted to do it for the last few years, but I just hadn't tested enough golf balls to really feel comfortable with it. Uh, but now that we're almost near 100, which is awesome, uh, it, it's been a crazy three years. But now that we're close to that number, I feel a little bit more confident with it. I've tested all these golf balls that I'm going to be mentioning, so it makes me feel like I can say it with a little bit more confidence opposed to just kind of guessing. So so for this list, this is going to be golf ball brands, and it's going to be specifically golf balls. Um, I thought originally about having, you know, like, hey, a golf ball brand, if they do clubs really well or if they sell merch really well, and then... When I was doing the list, it just got too convoluted, to be honest with you. It was kind of like, well, this one does great with clubs, but this one has amazing polos. And I was like, no, let's just go back to golf balls. Keep it simple. Uh, you know, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. It's an amazing acronym. It's one of my favorites, and sometimes I just have to remind myself of that. So, uh, yeah, I want to just keep it basic stuff. This is going to be the normal stuff I review golf balls on, you know, performance, value, design, you know, all that kind of stuff, but which golf ball brand has essentially kind of the best lineup. So number five is going to be Snell for me. Now, um, I do love Snell. Snell came out with a new rebrand this year, and that's probably what propelled them into this top five list because before they were an amazing golf brand with an amazing designer. I've always loved Snell, uh, but this new rebrand they came out with is really good. They improved the golf ball design as far as the logo. The alignment tool is so much easier to see. I use an alignment tool all the time. And on the old models, it just didn't have enough thickness or, I mean, it was really just Snell and the font was terrible. And I, I had trouble lining my golf ball up. I really did. And even people I played with had trouble with it. And this one's a lot better. Um, just the whole rebrand as a whole is awesome. The performance is great. It feels amazing. And honestly, it feels like something like a Pro V1. I mean, it's Dean Snell. You're going to get that. And so it feels like a premium tour golf ball at $33 a dozen, which is one of the best values you're going to find on the market. Uh, now, where Snell does kind of get hit here is that they only have three golf balls. They have, of course, the Prime. They have the Prime X, uh, which is going to be the, for the faster swingers. And then they have the Get Some, which is their two-piece golf ball. And that's it. They don't have like a value tour ball. They don't have anything kind of for specific swing speeds. It's usually pretty general, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, but these other other ones that I'm going to be mentioning have five, six, seven, eight, one of them even nine to ten <laughs> golf balls and something like that. If you can hit nine out of ten times, it's a little more impressive than just hitting three out of three. All right, so coming in at number four and coming in hot is TaylorMade Golf. Uh, this one kind of surprised me a little bit. I've never been huge into the TaylorMade. I've never been like hey, you know, play TaylorMade golf balls. You know, I've just never been that guy. Uh, but I will say that TaylorMade has done a phenomenal job. I've reviewed a little bit more of their golf balls over the past year. I love their soft response. I love their tour response. And I, I gotta say, I really love the tour response stripe. It has slowly become a top five golf ball for me. Honestly, probably even top three. I've been using it on the course. I really love the performance. And even though the TP5 and the TP5X aren't for my swing speed, they're such well-crafted golf balls and they do perform so well for people who do have that swing speed that it just really, you have to add it in there too. You have to give them credit where credit's due. So the entire lineup from TaylorMade is really, really good. Uh, their distance golf ball, you know, the two-piece TaylorMade distance is just okay for me. And I'll tell you what, if that golf ball was a little bit better, uh, it might have propelled it a little higher than four. But unfortunately, the numbers were kind of mediocre with that one. So I feel four is a really good place for it. It's awesome that it even got into my list. If you'd asked me before I started doing research or anything, I probably wouldn't have even put it in my top five. So well-deserved, well underrated maybe? Well, underrated by me at least. But uh, good job, TaylorMade. I got to say, I'm impressed. And at number three, we have, now before I tell you number three, I do want to say, doing the top three for this video was extremely difficult. All three of the following companies I'm getting ready to mention to you have had amazing years, have been some of the best golf balls I've tested, are golf balls I use out on the course frequently. They're all amazing. And I had to crunch so many numbers to really get down and find a nitty gritty. So, I mean, if we're talking about these top three companies, you know, we're, we're talking 
fractions of numbers here. We're talking 97%, 98%, 99%. Like it's, it's all three of these companies are amazing. I had to really crunch some serious numbers. So any of these top three, you know, if you're like, oh man, number three, that's, it's underrated. No, like, trust me, all three of these are 10 out of 10 companies for me, at least. I, I just, you have to number them somehow. So with that being said, number three for me is Srixen Golf. Uh, I love Srixen Golf. They're one of the first golf balls I really tested and fell in love with. I've tested the Soft Feel, which I think just an all-around soft golf ball, great for winter time, amazing performance. Uh, I love the uh, the Q Star. The review hasn't come out yet, but I've tested it, and it's right in line with other Strixen balls. The Q Star Tour not only is one of the best values on the market, but performance-wise for moderate swingers, and then the Divide being such a unique ball, one of the first to really come out and you know kind of take homage to what Ping did back in the 80s and do you know the two tone. I still love that ball. And even getting into the tour line, which is the Z Star, the Z Star 15, and even as of last year, they released the Z Star Diamond, which was a newer review I just got done on the channel a couple weeks ago now. And it, even though my swing speed wasn't great for it, I felt like. I, I thought it performed really well. It really had a great design. They've done an amazing job around the greens. And really the only thing that hurts Strixen here is a couple things. One, uh, the design could be better. The design is actually really good. I love, you know, obviously the Divide is amazing and they have the Divide even for the Z-Star and the Z-Star 15 if you want to. Uh, so they get pluses for that. Uh, but on the basic balls, their alignment tools are from the Stone Ages at this point. And honestly, they could do better. And you know, as far as just the overall design, you know, they just don't have that pop, that shine. Uh, you know, which I know what you're thinking. You might say, well, who cares about that stuff? But again, we're talking fractions here, so there has to be something that sets these golf balls apart. And also, the durability on the Strixons is kind of hit and miss. For me, it's mostly been good, but they have had some issues in the past with a couple lemons in there. You'll get like maybe one or two golf balls every 12, where the durability on one's just not good. Is that really a big deal? No, because the value is there, but overall it, I've heard a lot of people complain about it and I've seen it in the comment sections too uh, about people saying, hey, you know, I've had issues with durability and asking me if I've had those similar experiences. So those things knock it down just a tiny bit and knock it out of the top two. Uh, but listen, ask me tomorrow and who knows, it might be number one. It's just, it, that's how close these are. All right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead now and do some honorable mentions. Just because the final two, I, I think once I say what number two is, most people who watch my channel will know what number one is. Uh, and again, this was so difficult to, to do one and two. Three, I was able to kind of knock out early, but one and two, I just went back and forth until I was blue in the face and almost did a tie, to be honest with you. That's how close, I almost broke down and just said, guys, it's a tie. I didn't want to do that though. I did find one thing, you're gonna laugh and you're gonna roll your eyes, I know, but. But regardless, let's get to the honorable mentions real quick because there are a couple golf companies I want to talk about that a lot of you might say, well, hey, where's this golf company? I love them. I, I play their golf ball. So they might be on this list and set as ours an honorable mention. So let's get into that. The first honorable mention I have is Wilson. I do love Wilson. Their Wilson staff balls are phenomenal. Uh, they do a great job designing them. Uh, they feel really good. They just have that traditional golf ball feel. You can trust them. They've been, they have the most championships still. That won't remain forever, but for now they still do. And overall, the, the majority of golf balls they have are pretty good. I love the Wilson Zip. It's, it's one of the best golf balls I've tested and it's like a dollar a golf ball. Uh, but there's a couple things that knock them out of the running. One is there's too many swings and misses. Uh, the Wilson 500 was one of the worst golf balls I've ever tested. Uh, the Wilson Triad was okay for my swing speed, but obviously I wasn't compressing it well enough because the numbers were abysmal and I hated the feel, hated the feel of it. The Duo, you know, Soft, the Duo Optics, those are amazing. But again, it's, it seems like with Wilson, it's either an absolute home run or it's a strikeout, uh, which is actually common for baseball with, you know, power hitters. But that, that's just how it really feels. It feels like either they absolutely knock it out the park or they just really fall flat on their face. And they have so many golf balls between the Chaos and the 500 and the Velocity and the, I mean, they have like 12 to 15 different models of golf ball. And I think it's a little oversaturated, so it pushed them out. But I do have a lot of respect for Wilson and they're always one of my underrated favorites for sure. All right, the next honorable mention, I feel like this one's gonna be the one that the majority of people are like, hey, what the heck, how come it's not on the list? Uh, that's gonna be the MaxFly line. Now there's a couple things about MaxFly that's awesome. First of all, uh, their tour golf balls 
were an amazing value. Um, I don't like it. We'll get to that in a second, but they were an amazing value. They have pretty decent performance. It's not great performance, but they're pretty decent. Uh, but really where Maxfly has been shining for me on my channel is the Maxfly Straight. I mean, it's really one of the straightest golf balls and longest golf balls I've hit. The Maxfly Soft is a little too soft for my compression, but I know people who play it who have a slower swing speed and it's really phenomenal for them. Uh, but where Maxfly kind of swings and misses here is that the TriFly really was just okay. I, I didn't have a lot of good success with it. I haven't tested the new 23 model yet, but the 22 model was really kind of mediocre. And then as far as the Torboff balls, again, the performance was good. It wasn't great. Uh, they added the new S line this year, which is supposed to rival the AVX, which um, maybe it does that well, but as far as performance numbers and doing you know, what I need it to do, it fell flat on its face. And so there's just too much of this here with MaxFly. And the other thing that really grinds my gears about them is the price increases. You know, they started out with their tour golf balls. You could get two for 55. Then it went to two for 60. Now it's two for 70. Next year it'll be two for 100. And then it'll be two for 150. And pretty soon we'll be paying the same as we're paying for Titleist. You know, it's, it just doesn't make sense to me. They just keep increasing the prices every year. And this is a direct-to-consumer brand. I know it's technically through a retailer, but Dix owns them. So you're not paying a middleman. You're just making the golf ball and it's your company. So the fact that we're seeing massive price hikes every year, and then but then you look at like the MaxFly Straight and it's like two for 35 or two for 40. That's a great value. So again, too, too much this, but I do like MaxFly. I'm not liking the path they're on, but overall a great series of golf balls, especially for value. And then my last honorable mention is actually going to go to Bridgestone. Um, I, I look, Bridgestone's tour line is really, really good. I love that they have four different tour balls, you know, for under 105 and for over 105. Uh, their golf balls really do what they're intended to do. The RX feels like an amazing distance golf ball. I get more distance with it. It feels a little firmer, a little less spin around the greens. And then their Tor XS, uh, you have to forgive me on the names. And that's, that's another reason they're off the list because the names are just terrible. I cannot remember the names. But regardless of that, uh, their XS or whatever, whatever the, the under 105 is, was one of the most spinningest golf balls. It's soft, it's squishy, has amazing feel, amazing distance. The performance is really off the charts and I love that they tailor it to specific swing speeds. Where Bridgestone kind of got knocked off the list where they uh, shot themselves in the foot, as you want to say, uh, was basically kind of with that, that middle range. The E12 is awful. It is abysmal. And I know some of you have told me, hey, the new model is, you know, a little better, I think. I, well, okay, but a little better ain't going to cut it because the E12 is, is one of the top three worst golf balls I've tested, the, the previous Model 22. Uh, now, the E6 is pretty decent. I like the E6. The E9 was okay for the most part. There were some things I'd change, but overall wasn't bad. Uh, but again, just I, I really want those value golf balls to be really, really good, uh, especially on this channel because that's kind of what this channel is about. If you're new to it, value is really important. It's about getting the best golf ball you can for the least amount you can pay. Value is important. And I feel like Bridgestone nailed the top end really, really, really well, but the middle and bottom end still needs some work. So they, they might be six, seven, but they're, they're definitely a company I like. If I find one on the course, I'll always use it. Um, I, I love how they perform and I trust them. So there is that. All right, so here we are down to the final two. And number two is going to be Vice Golf. Now, Vice is one of my favorite golf companies. I tested them on my channel, oh goodness, two years ago, two and a half years ago. I did a whole Vice Week. Uh, love Vice golf balls. I think they do an amazing job at, you know, really having different golf balls for different players. I love their Pro Soft Pro Pro Plus lineup. I love how all those golf balls feel. I feel they really hit the nail on the head with, with all that design. And then really where Vice stands out is not only do you have these great performing golf balls that, that are amazing to hit, amazing to play with, but they stand out in a couple ways. The first one is their design. They have some of the coolest, uh, freshest, newest, hippest, whatever you want to say designs out there. They're always coming out with limited editions. Uh, I mean, look at these golf balls, guys. These are just fantastic. And you might not be into this. You might say, well, that's too loud. I don't want, well, just get the white one then. But they also have a green and they have just a red and then they have these drips and they have these, I mean, they have amazing all over, just their design is incredible. Every time they come out with a new design, I'm just like, well, they can't outdo what they just did. And then I'm like, oh, never mind, they did. <laughs> so I really love that about them. And then the value is there. The value is amazing. They have, you know, the five price. Now the value has gone down a little bit because it used to be, it used to be 35 a dozen. Now it's 39 a dozen, which, you know, inflation happens. Uh, but 
Not as great as it used to be, but still, if you buy them in bulk, you can get, you know, like the Vice Pro for 32 a dozen. If you buy them in bulk, you know, for like the Tour, I think it's 21 a dozen. So there's still great value to be had there, especially if you just are all in on Vice. Um, really, honestly, I, I don't have too many issues with it other than the Vice Pro Zero. Uh, if you don't know about that, so Vice had this amazing lineup. They were incredible. I loved them. They came out with a golf ball called the Vice Pro Zero, and I got excited. I'm like, oh, I love Vice. I love this. That's awesome. Let's play it. And it was, it was doo-doo. I mean, it was, it was awful. It was just a terrible golf ball. And then, you know, I had a couple people kind of tell me, well, no, you're doo-doo. And I was like, no, I'm like, I promise you this golf ball is not. But then I started seeing other reviews from other outlets, even my golf spy, you know, I, it's, I think it got a 58 out of 100 on my golf spot. It was really bad. And so it's just, it was a swing and a miss, which happens. It happens. Sometimes you just go for the gold or you make a new golf ball and you just swing and miss. It happens. But that is something that might have taken Vice down just a smidge, just enough for this next company to come in for the kill. Which my number one golf ball brand for 2023 is, is going to be Callaway Golf. So Again, kind of like with TaylorMade, I wasn't expecting, you know, if you'd asked me a year ago, Callaway would not have probably made a list because, again, I'm about value. Value is a big part of my channel. Uh, but where Callaway really has come in strong is a couple things. One is the performance of the golf balls. When I tested, I, I did earlier this year, basically, I, I just went through the line. I did, you know, the Super Soft and then the Max and then the this and, then, you know, I went all the way Chrome Soft and X and yada, yada, yada. And each time I would test a golf ball, I, I just, I never had so much fun testing golf ball after golf ball. Not all of them were perfect. You know, the ERC was just okay. I heard the, the new models better. But when I was testing the super, you know, the super fast or the max, or I was just always surprised by something. It was just incredible how great the performance was. This year, Callaway has really amped up their designs. They come out with all these amazing, cool designs, which really, I think, puts them right there with Vice. You know, there's a golf ball for any type of guy now. If you just want the basic, you can have it. If you want red, white, and blue, you can have it. If you want, and it's just really, truly incredible. And so I give Callaway so much credit for coming out with that. Uh, they've really been trying hard. They have nine different, nine to ten different golf balls. I mean, even their ladies ball is really phenomenal. Uh, their Riva, my mom plays it, is absolutely phenomenal. And even sometimes I'll hit the Riva because if it's too far of a shot and we're playing a scramble, she'll just be like, hey, take my shot. I think it feels good. I think it performs well. And it's a ladies ball, you know. So overall, the fact that they're trying so hard uh, with every golf ball they have, you know, they're really putting a lot of money and effort into all the golf balls, whether it's their ladies ball, uh, you know, their, their uh, tour line, their, their value tour line, their budget, their two-piece, whatever it is, they've really been doing a, a fantastic job, I think, and they've had an amazing 2023, uh, and that kind of inched them a little bit above Vice. And there is one more thing, and I'm going to mention it because, again, I get this all the time on the channel. Uh, when I post reviews, usually ones that are kind of negative or average reviews, people mention it to me, but the other thing that Callaway has that the Vice doesn't is a great alignment tool. I know, you're going to roll your eyes. I know, you're going to, you know, oh God, here he goes about the alignment tool. But again, this is why I stress on the channel all the time. If you have two amazing golf balls and they both perform really well, they both have great value, they both blah, 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 all do this stuff. And one of them has a terrible alignment tool and the other one has triple track, triple track 360, or they actually just, in, uh, for 23, introduced this new one that's kind of like a tailor-made. I forget what it's called, but it's more like you line it up on the side like and use the, the images, you know, like the little pic, uh, pictures on the ball to essentially line it like the TP5 Pix does. Uh, but that's a, that's their new thing. They have all kinds of different ones. My mom loves the triple track. She actually putts with a ERC just for the triple track. And she's getting ready to go to the 360 when, you know, her current supply runs out. So, look, is it silly? I know not. Yes, not, not everyone likes a good alignment tool. But again, it's something that can really edge over a company. So, again, we're talking about a 98%, a 99%. Like We're talking fractions here, but uh, Callaway is my number one for 23. I've been really impressed what they've done. Their performances were off the charts. Maybe not the best value, which again, I know, Nick, the whole video, you've talked about how value is important. I know, but Callaway just has really knocked it out the park this year. And even though that value isn't there, 
I understand that when you spend all this money, not necessarily on tour players, because they've had the same tour players for a while, but when you spend all this money on marketing and new clubs that are fantastic, which clubs have nothing to do with the golf ball review, but you're putting all this money in, I understand you gotta get some money back. You can't just have these consumer, direct to consumer prices. So I, I understand it, I respect it. Um, there are still some value balls there to have for sure, but overall, Congratulations, Callaway. What an awesome 2023. Guys, tell me your favorite golf company below. I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, as always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. Until next time. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this review. Just you simply watching this review helps support the channel and helps me be able to accomplish my dreams and my goal, which is to get you the best advice on golf balls I possibly can. Uh, if you wanna support the channel in another way, there's a couple things you can do. One, make sure you're subscribed. That really helps. Make sure you like, make sure you comment. The algorithm loves that kind of stuff. Uh, and also currently I do have a fundraiser. I never ask for money or anything like that as far as just, hey, pay for my channel or pay for this or video, you know, I don't do any of that. But if you want to support the channel in a different way, I am doing a fundraiser for a Bushnell launch monitor. It's a really top of the line, expensive one. Um, and basically for the 2024 season, that's what I'm going to be using. And it's pretty expensive. So if you want to, I put a link in below in all my videos. Uh, if you want to contribute to that, even if it's a dollar, it really helps. And if not, I understand too. Like I said, you guys are amazing because you're just watching the content and that is enough for me. But if you ever decide you want to give an extra that's how I recommend to do it. Also, follow the Facebook group. I have a Facebook group, Golf Ball Addicts. It's awesome on there. You can ask me questions about golf balls, you know, which one you think, blah, 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 and I'll answer them. Um, and also, I have an Instagram page as well if you just like to see pictures of golf stuff every once in a while. So thanks, guys, again. Catch you on the fly.